How's it going everybody? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jesse and this is video six in my bungalow renovation series. Today we're going to be tackling the rest of the kitchen walls. We're going to finish out the kitchen. Uh, we're going to cut some outlet boxes and we're going to discuss uh, a brick stack that needs to be covered with drywall. How I'm going to frame that out, uh, tap con screws, materials I'm going to use for it. So it's a really interesting and educational video. Let's get into it. Okay, so uh, I want to show you an interesting problem you might have to solve in an older house. Uh, so it's got a brick vent stack. This is uh, plaster over some brick. And I thought about just chipping away the plaster and exposing the brick, which gives it a kind of cool aesthetic. But um, for a couple reasons, I need to close this in with some drywall. Trouble being, there's not, as the brick, you know, you can't just screw drywall into brick. So you need to give it something to adhere to. So coming around here, this is a column that came off of, or that supports this wall. So you can see the top plate up here. Uh, and frames out three inches past the brick stack. So I needed to take this two by six, measure three inches of depth here, and tap con this in. And I'll show you what a tap con is. Uh, so now I've got a flush surface here. So I've already done that off camera. And then I'm gonna take this two by four and put it here and use the same tap con screws to attach it to the brick here, giving me a flush surface to put drywall on right there. The other added benefits of doing this, uh, I'm going to be relocating these wires. So I've got this box that will sit here. This gives me a cavity where I can actually relocate wires and a box. Um, so now I can have a light switch here that will control the kitchen lights since I this switch was in the wall that is no longer here. So this is a Tapcom screw. Here, so we can show it to the camera. Hopefully that'll get in focus. So it has special threads that will grab into brick or concrete or any sort of masonry surface. Um, there are a number of varieties of these. I got the star bit head because it prevents slipping of the drill bit and because these can actually recess into the wood. So if I'm going to be putting drywall across the front, this can actually go into the surface of the wood and sit flush. So there's not a, a protruding head. And then tap cons require a special type of drill bit. So this goes into my drill and this bit along with the hammering function of this drill will just punch a hole into the brick that I can then run the screw into. So I'll show you that process. So I've got my special drill bit. I'm gonna locate a spot on the two by four and drill a hole straight into the brick. Now I can take the Tapcon screw, put on my star bit, and run it into this hole. Okay, so now this 2x4 is on the wall. I'm going to put three more in here to make sure it's in good and holding straight, and then I can take that drywall and screw it to this portion of the wall. Now that I have the sheet of drywall hung on the wall, I have marked the spots where outlet boxes are, and I'm going to use this to cut it out. Now you can buy drywall cutout tools specifically, but this is just a Dremel with a specific bit. Uh, this collar sets the depth that it's going to go in, so this is 5 8 drywall. Um, I've got it just about an, uh, 3 quarters of an inch so that it's going to go through the drywall and then I'm going to move it until it hits the edge of the outlet box. 
as I can feel, and then I'm going to jump just to the outside edge, and then I'm going to press against the outside edge and just run around it and cut it out. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, it takes kind of getting used to, and sometimes I'll cut pieces out so that I've got a better view of where the box actually is. Um, sometimes if you're not careful, you can kind of gouge out a big chunk of drywall. So go slow, take your time, and uh, it should turn out okay. So you can see I got a little wild right here, um, went up above the box. Fortunately, an oversized outlet cover uh, will cover that up, no big deal. I'm also gonna be tiling at this spot, so a lot of opportunity to cover that up. Drywall is hung all through the kitchen. See behind me. It's starting to look like an actual room now. Uh, the window's boarded up temporarily until my until I can find a custom size 34 by 32 window. I still need to tape all the joints, but I've pre-filled them and I've hit all the uh, screw holes. So I'll give you a quick walk around in the kitchen. All right, but walking into the newly wide open kitchen. Ready to get some cabinets put in here. I'm just gonna run some primer over this to seal it and then we'll put all the cabinets in. Got a lot of outlets here above the countertop. That's good for little gadgets and kitchen, uh, kitchen devices. Got a spot for the garbage disposal and the dishwasher. More outlets over there. This will be a light switch that controls that. I relocated, if you remember before, there was like an electric box here and then one over here that but neither made much sense. So now we're gonna have a sconce light that'll have two heads and come down over the window. And then that switch will control it and it will also control the garbage disposal. Window there. And on this wall, as a reminder, that will be the fridge right there. There'll be a little cabinet in between, and then the stove and that plug. I'm trying to figure out, I just kind of left the two outlets that were there from the previous owner. Uh, it's intended for a range hood and potentially a microwave, so I'll see if I can get that going. If not, I'll just cover them up with cover plates. And then this is a newly relocated switch in the bay I created over the old uh, brick stack. That will be a three-way switch that works with the one on the wall over there and controls can lights that I'm going to mount in the ceiling. I also spent a little time up there rewiring, so I moved the wires around and uh, I'm going to have little wafer lights right here. So these four-inch wafer lights will mount up in the ceiling here. I'm going to get those laid out and then they just kind of Hold in place with these tabs, really user friendly. And then just to give you a quick look at the rest of the place, it's wide open, 
Drywall is all mudded, still needs to be taped and blended through. Only one little piece left is right there that I need to patch that in. Then I'll show you the kitchen counter. See the old glimpse at it. These are really cool. So these are bamboo countertops. Pick these up on Facebook Marketplace. Beautiful. I can cut them with woodworking tools so I can cut the sink hole. I'm gonna uh, put this an eight foot and a four foot run. So I'm gonna need 10 feet of counter along this wall and two feet over there, give or take, maybe 20 inches. So it'll work out just right. Very excited to get this put together. Well, that wraps up video six in the series. I hope you enjoyed seeing that kitchen kind of take shape. Now it has walls rather than just the, uh, the insulation batch showing up. So the next video in this series is going to be possibly one of my least favorite steps, but a very important one is finishing the drywall. So mudding, taping, taping corners, uh, and then putting a, a coat of primer and some paint on the wall. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, give us a like if you like this video and comment below. Let us know what you think of the renovation so far.